Hi there. We had several requests for the basic quiz that we give at the beginning of the year. It's a test to let us know all the different operations with whole numbers and with decimals. And the funny letters at the top stand for we need to know who doesn't know what quiz. So we want to make sure that you have no gaps from your elementary school education where you might have just forgotten something and we want to be solid with that. In order to pass, you needed to get four out of five in each row across. And if you still haven't done that, you haven't received color on my color recording sheet. Remember when you get color all the way across for whole numbers, fractions, oh sorry, whole numbers, decimals, and then fractions, you will get five pride tickets, which is a great thing. An easy way to use this to review is to fast forward to the problems that you had trouble completing properly. You were supposed to do a gold corrective on this, so this is a great assist to make sure that you've got this. Even if you lost your original test, you can do a gold corrective and uh, get the points that you need. Okay, so I'm going to just start off and do all 40 of these problems. I'm going to go pretty quickly so you can rewind and see them again if you need to. Also, you can pause before each problem and try it yourself on a separate sheet of paper and staple that to the gold corrective if you've lost your original. Uh, I will make some extra copies of these just in case. Okay, here we go. For the helpful tips for basic operations, I reminded you that addition, there's not really a lot to do, just be neat. And we are using plus one when we uh, regroup from one column and lend it over or give it over to the next column. Okay, starting off, number one, there is no regrouping, it's just straight. 4 plus 5 is 9, 3 plus 2 is 5, 59. Number 2, 8 plus 7 is 15. I put a little plus 1 for carrying the 1 where you add the 1. Uh, you've already had 8 plus 5 is 15, so the 5 ones column goes down, but 110 goes to this next column. 1 plus 1 plus 3 is 5, 55 is your answer. 3 plus 4 is 7, 2 plus 7 is 9. 2 plus 5 is 7, 797 is the answer, 5, 6 plus 9 is 15, add another grouping here, in this case this was 10 tens, so we're going to give over 100 into this next column, but we usually just say it as carry the 1, uh, that's going to be 6, 2, when we're putting in commas we start on the right side and we move over 1, 2, 3 times, we put a comma, just to help us keep track of the names of the numbers and this would be 2,000, you say the name of the period when you get to the column, uh, when you get to the comma, 2,655. Okay, and the last one, 8 plus 7 again is 15, carry the 1, 1 plus 9 is 10, carry the 1, 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 8 is 18, carry the 1, and you get 6,805. And that's it for addition. With subtraction, if the number on top is greater than the number below it, you don't have to do any regrouping. You just can borrow. Uh, you can just subtract regularly. 4 minus 3 is 1. 8 minus 6 is 2. But here, if you had none and you needed to, re to take away 9, a lot of kids get confused with this. They think that it means the answer is 9. Well, it's not. You're going to actually take one of these tens and break it up. So we say the phrase, cross out 1 less 1. Let me say it again. Cross out 1 less 1 to help us remember how to do this accurately. I don't make the 1 long. I don't make it into 310. I want to know that I have 2 in the 10s column and 10 in the 1s column now. 10 minus 9 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 11 is the answer. Here, same thing. The 1 is going to need to get more in order to subtract 3, but it can't borrow from this neighbor. The neighbor doesn't have enough to give to be able to still be able be able to subtract 4. So this is the regular way that you would do it. You would go to the next column over that doesn't have anything that it has to pay and you would do cross out 1 less 1. Now the 1 can borrow from the 11 because the 11 has plenty. Cross out 1 less 1. 11 minus 3 is 8. 10 minus 4 is 6. You don't need to put the 0 in front. You don't walk around saying I have 0 5 dollars so you wouldn't put your answer as 0 6 8. The 68 is just fine. Okay, number nine. Again, you've got the zeros here, so we're going to go to the column that has enough. Cross out one less one. Cr 
cross out one less one. By the way, we never cross out the ones digit or the final digit on the end if you're using decimals. Whatever's on the end doesn't get crossed out because it doesn't have anybody to give to and it causes confusion. Oftentimes kids are off by one. So we want to never cross out the last digit on the end. 10 minus 6 is 4, 9 minus 0 is 9, and 7 minus 7 is nothing, so we don't need to put the 0 in front. Answer is 94. 7 minus 1 is 6. You didn't have to borrow or do anything before you could subtract that part, but now you have the zeros. So you're going to look to the neighbor. Nope, not enough. Uh, neighbor's going to look to the other neighbor, and now we can do cross out 1 less 1. Now the 0 can borrow from the 10, cross out 1 less 1. Okay, so 10 minus 7 is 3, 9 minus 9 is 0, 1 minus nothing is 1. Move over 3 times, 1,036 is your answer. Okay, on to multiplication. This is a multiplication fact. It's one of the toughest ones. 8 times 7 is 56, but you can see that it kind of does an order 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a good memory tip for that one. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 1, which is really 3 times 10, is 30. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. But it's in the tens column, so it's going to be 42. So 3 times 2 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 42. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 2 is 16, 160. Number four, you're going to have the two digit multiplied by another two digits. So we're going to have to have two rows of answers. When we do it right, it's going to look like this with a placeholder zero. So just get used to that pattern when you have two digits multiplied by two other digits. Okay, so starting. Nine times six is 54. Carry the five. Nine times three is 27. Plus, in my head, I'm thinking 3 more is 30, and then 2 more is 32. But you can add 27 plus 5, however you'd like. Remember, it is not bad to use your fingers. So 27 plus 5 is 32. We have our placeholder 0 because we're not in this column anymore. We're not multiplying by 1, really. We're multiplying by 10. So if you put a placeholder 0 here, it's like you multiplied the answer by 10. And that's the same thing that we're going to see always when you have an answer ending in 0. It's the same thing as multiplying the answer by 10. So like uh, 5 times 10 is 50, 37 times 10 is 370. So we put the placeholder 0 because we're not under this column of the 1s anymore. And we moved over and we're going to get rid of the old carrying. 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 3 is 3. Of course it's going to be 1 times, it's going to look exactly the same, so you can always look for that pattern. Now we're adding straight down these two rows of numbers. 4 plus 0 is 4, 2 plus 6 is 8, 3 plus 3 is 6. 684 is your final answer. Number 15 is similar in that you've got three digits here, but I'll show you how to work with them when you have the zeros. It makes it uh, easy if you control your zeros. First, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 8 is 32, carry the 3. 4 times 9 is 36, plus 3 is 39. Now, I'm not in the column for this 4 anymore. And when I multiply anything by 0, I don't need a row of zeros. So that doesn't help me, and sometimes it confuses kids and it has them get the wrong answer. So I'm going to put another placeholder 0 here because we are not under this row, and we are not under this row. We're going to multiply by this 4. So these two zeros help us keep control. And remember that this is not really... 4, it's 400. If I were to expand this, it would really equal 400 plus 4. So when we multiplied it by 4, we got 3, 9, 3, 4. Same thing when we multiply by 4 again. We'll get the same thing. So you can see the pattern repeats itself. And we always like to look for patterns in math. 4 plus 0 is 4. 3 plus 0 is 3. 9 plus 4 is 13. Carry the 1. 7, 9, 3. Three places over, comma. And that is the multiplication. I feel like I have a mistake in that. Let me double check it. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 8 is 32. Ah, darn. Okay, no worries. I got it wide out. 4 
And this is the same thing you would have to do too. If you felt like something wasn't quite right, you just go back over it. Four times eight is 32. I made it a 33. So I'm noticing that in my pattern, it's gonna be wrong twice because I used the same number. So that's the risk that you run if ever you use the same number. If you do the mistake, you may not catch it. But if you do it a second time, then you may catch it. So now our numbers above look right. We have four. Two, five, no, six. So four plus zero, zero, two, 13, carry the one is going to be six. Okay, that looks better. All righty, multiplication. Now we're on to division. Division is causing students a lot of difficulties, so we're going to make sure that we're doing the underlining. First off, does 8 go into 1? No. Does 8 go into 16? Yes. So you're going to have a digit on top of the 6. 8 goes into 16 two times. That one's really easy because it's one of your multiplication facts. 7 goes into 6? No. 67? Yes. 67 is greater than 7. 7 goes into 67 nine times because nine times, six, uh, 9 times 7 is 63. When you subtract, you get 4 left over. We're going to call that remainder 4. Now underlining with the 11. 11 doesn't go into 1, but it will go into 14. So you have a digit here and a digit here. So you're looking for a two-digit quotient before you get to the remainder. 11 goes into 14 one time. 3 is less than 11, so that's good. And then you bring down the 6. 11 goes into 36 three times. You get 33, subtract, 3 left over, that's less than 11, that's good. Remainder 3, 13, remainder 3. Number 19, 42. So we're going to think about this like 40. Does 42 go into 1? No. 12? No. 128? Yeah. So you can do a cover-up method and you can say 4 goes into 12 three times. So that's the number we're going to try, a 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. That's looking good so far. 2 is less than 42. Great. Now it's time to bring down the 1. 42 into 21. Well, 21 is less than 42. So this digit where we just brought down the 1 has to have an answer on top of it. So the answer is 0. 42 will go into 21 0 times. And then we just call it remainder 21. Last one. We're going to think about 53 as 50 to help us with our getting our right digits. Remember that we're still doing the dad, mom, sister, brother mnemonic. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. But remember, after you subtract, sister checks to make sure she looks good enough. And the answer below is less than the divisor. So dad, mom, sister, brother. OK, 53, does it go into 4? No. 43? No. 432? Yeah. So I'm thinking about how many 50 cent um, Toys can I buy for four dollars and thirty-two cents? Well, I can get eight of them. Eight times three is twenty-four. Carry the two. Eight times five is forty. Plus two is forty-two. Subtracting, we're going to do cross out one less one. Eight is left. Eight is less than fifty-three. That's great. Now, brother can bring down the other eight, and a digit on top of here is just going to be a one. Fifty-three subtract five thirty-five. So this is going to be remainder thirty-five. I got a little crowded there. 81 remainder 35. That's it for this side. We're going to stop and do another video for the next side.